I'm uh, Jack Davey. I'm going to I'm going to call the meeting to order at of the Deerfield Capital Improvement Planning Committee, March 22nd, 2021, at 5:31 p.m. Okay. And uh, so the agendas. I think the agendas changed a, a little bit, but the first thing on the agenda, as always, is to approve the minutes. I, I make I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I second that. I have to amend the minutes, and uh, I noticed one that we need to uh, change, and that was with the capital stabilization fund. On the minutes, it showed up at twenty five thousand instead right. of two hundred and fifty thousand requests. Right. Oh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I see. There's a typo there. Yeah, yeah no, just, no. just, and that's the only thing that I that I noticed that we needed to amend. Well, the one thing that I noticed is that on some of the items, I didn't put the dollar amount. So that's another thing that I'm going to have to have to correct. So, so do we need another motion to? Uh, well, if you just make the motion to approve them as amended. Yep. The, the only other question I had, Mrs. Ken, I'm sorry, um, was on all of the votes, you note that they're unanimous, mm -hmm. but I believe they should be noted as roll call votes. So you need to put roll call vote, and put everyone's name and a yes. Uh, um, and once you do it one time, you can just paste it into all of the all of the votes. But that's the way I've been instructed to do it at the school committee level. It's it's similar to an executive uh, an executive session vote that's always that's always recorded as a roll call. So it just says R O L L call, and then you put your name and a hyphen and a yes, and my name and a hyphen and a yes, Jeff, and so on for all seven people. And once you have that template, you just copy it into each vote below your unanimous votes. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the dollar amounts and a few of the motions were missing. And as Jeff noted, the $250,000 on the uh, stabilization approval at that point in time. Yeah. And then just have those, so that's as amended. Okay, so you just roll call now, Dave. Uh, so all in all in favor, um, Jack Davy, aye. Mark, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Uh, Ken, Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason, Denise Mason, aye. Skip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. And Carolyn Ness? Aye. Okay, so and the, so the uh, motion passes. Um, okay, so the um, the next thing on the agenda was to was to meet with uh, Julie from the building committee, but I guess um, I guess they they haven't really had a meeting and they weren't prepared to present any um, recommendations or updates. Is that correct, Casey? Yes, they haven't had a meeting since the, and I got her message this morning. They haven't had a meeting since the last information session. Okay. So, so we, we, um, So I, I don't know where that leaves us at, at this point, but we uh, tabled the um, needs assessment survey and the feasibility study um, on, on, this, on Jeff's suggestion that we um, wait to vote until we hear from the building committee. Um, it's but not I guess just necessarily the building committee, Jack. I actually... John Pachurik and I worked on that. Mostly it was John. So I've asked John to speak to you about it. And he's okay. here. He's just finishing dinner. 
Why? Inhale, inhaling I do dinner. It too. <laughs> okay, so I guess we, we should hear from John then. Sorry, Tom, John. Got in the door from running at 5'11, pounced in the shower, and now I'm filling my face with cereal. So, <laughs> yeah, healthy dinner. Um, so, feasibility study for the senior center. We know that uh, we petitioned the Franklin Regional Council of Governments on behalf of Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield for uh, the Division of Local uh, Technical Assistance grant money to do a uh, needs assessment study of the populace in Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield of 50 and older of what services they actually would utilize with a senior center slash community center. So at the end of that, the next step in the process for our senior citizens is actually to do a feasibility study. Once the needs assessment is done, that all that information is cycled to an actual architectural firm. An architectural firm is then going to step in. They're not going to look at the senior center and say, hey, if we revitalize it to what it is today, how much would it cost? We've already done that. This is way beyond that scope. This is okay. In order to serve the needs of the seniors for the next 20 to 40 years, how much size do we need? Is it all on a single floor? Can we do multi-floor? Is there a terrace? Is there an, a, an indoor swimming pool for a community center? I don't know. All this information then gets translated into different lots that are available in towns. It gets translated into building renovations or whether buildings need to be taken down. What's the most cost-effective approach for the towns to come up with a renovated and or brand new senior center and slash community center? So we know that we as the town's building advisory committee, separate my two hats, town buildings advisory committee, we went through and did a uh, assessment of the town buildings. This is entirely different. This is a second step for a renovated and or new senior center facility that the seniors can rely on for the next 20, 40, 50 years down the road. So I'm more than happy to entertain any questions that anybody has, but this literally will look at, okay, what size do we need? Is it cost effective to renovate? Is it cost effective to start from scratch? And all our options, and literally they should at the end of this lay out three, four, five, six options to the town, the select board, the finance committee, the capital improvement planning committee to say, option one, pros and cons, price. Option two, pros and cons, price. And literally then we can bat the options back and forth and figure out which one we like, even if it's not the cheapest one, or it may be the least expensive one, but it really gives us the data to back our seniors in the future and say, okay, this is what we are willing to afford. And if they do it correctly, it actually will give you an impact on the tax base as well. So that was what the request was for. More than happy, uh, Jack, to answer any questions. Um, so I guess just a comment, not really a question, but I guess that you just clarified that, that um, my misconception, I thought that the feasibility study was, was directed purely at the present building, but it's not. No, it actually, the, as we say, hey, okay, we envision all of this going in, the building would have to be 10,200 square feet and it has to be a single floor structure. Now they're gonna look and say, okay, where can we fit that? Can we renovate that existing building? Can we renovate it with the church? Is the lot big enough to house that building? And these are all questions that they will have to answer and be very creative in their design. But what they have to do is ultimately give us back pros and cons in the cost of each site. That's the point. The feasibility study is not just one site. It's not hey, if you want to build it, and in this building, that, that's not beneficial to us. It doesn't give us options that we can bring back to the voters. So, yep. So, Ken, Ken you had your hand up? Yeah, I did. Um, so, my question deals with which senior center feasibility study or needs assessment dollar amount are we looking at? I've got a $50,000 number and a $42,500 number. Or is it both? <laughs> Yep, Casey would have to translate that because she broke it out by percentage. So the 
what we're talking about is the newer project, and that is the project that's 42.5. It's okay. broken out by percentage, support by the other two towns for two different activities because they're step-by-step, -step, as, as John explained, they're step-by-step -step functions. So the first one is what we're trying to get support for through the DLTA funds at the COG. The second one is about 25,000, maybe 30,000 right. for the feasibility study for the space itself, yep. for the I building. So it's not about the previous senior center church project. That's a legacy item that I have no information on. And I mentioned it before, but what John's describing is really a next step forward to, to evaluate what we have for senior needs and how we can fulfill them. Um, Question? Yes, Jeff. If I may, yes. Are, are we anticipating this to happen FY22? Or are we in a situation of tabling this, putting this off, and uh, looking, revisiting this in FY23, or, and, or if it should happen in FY22, and, and we have tabled this, if we need additional monies or some monies for this, we would have a better idea of the dollar amount instead of just guessing and hold a special town meeting to move forward with a request for a specific dollar amount to do this? Yes, yeah, so I the, don't know. Those are great questions, Jeff. I think the first part of the timeline that we're looking at is the DLTA fund should be awarded in the next 30 days. We know that we've partnered with UMass Boston, which uh, negates the public bidding laws. So we can go ahead and sign a contract with them, get them on board with a survey process and engaging the three communities and getting us true data back. The hope from the select board was to get that done by end of summer with true data in hand. So we then can start a feasibility study this fall to start with finance committee, capital improvement, uh, legislature, grants, federal grants, uh, earmarks, et cetera, for fiscal year 23 for possible construction. So the feasibility study we actually want to get done, hopefully by December, maybe January latest, so we can be batting this back and forth next winter. Sounds like an FY22 okay. request. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can I, so can I just ask again, um, so the, and sorry, John, I'm just trying to, Get, wrap my arms around the two numbers. We don't need to do anything with the 50, from my vantage point, we don't need to do anything with the $50,000 request for senior center slash church feasibility study that's a legacy uh, that Casey just mentioned. Yeah, is that correct, Casey? I just don't have the form in front of me. Yep. Yes, it is. Um, I think based on what GRLA has come back with, it might be less useful to pursue the church combination, the church senior center combination, as opposed to figuring out what the needs might be through the data John mentioned, and then addressing how we provide those services in a right. building space. So we don't need the 50,000, okay. And so, so we can make a motion on that and ask to either remove it or push it out to 2023 or something. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> And Casey, you. you mentioned the 42.5 will be enough to meet those needs as far as the assessment? We were estimating that. But keep in mind that we split. So Deerfield pays 50% of the cost for the senior center. And then the yeah. other two towns, this is not like SCEMS, the other two towns each pay 25%. So that estimated feasibility is actually the percentage. It's already split in the percentage. We're estimating right. between twenty-five and thirty thousand. So I put in twenty-five thousand. I was conservative on that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, for a few grand low, Jeff, we can always come back to finance and see if they would entertain a reserve. Yep. Right. Yep. 
So you so you get so you guys are saying that the needs assessment and the feasibility study go hand in hand. It's not mm -hmm. they do. However, they're two separate companies and two different entire projects. But in fact, the data translates into the other. Okay. Yep. You can't do a feasibility study because you don't know what the true needs are and the desires of the community right. until you've done your uh, your first part. Okay. Well, can I can I just comment or ask again? Is I, I'm I'm a little bit nervous about the needs assessment, which which to me seems like a survey of the of the community, and not and I'm not saying that uh, the the citizens of Deerfield don't have don't have good uh, wouldn't provide good feedback, but none of us none of us in this meeting really have any experience with what a senior center is supposed to do or should do, what, what uh, services it should provide to an elderly community. So, you know, to go out and ask the man, the man on the street, what do you think the senior center should do? I don't, I don't know that that's, I guess that would be helpful, but it's, it, it to me, it would only maybe be part of the so part of this is open-ended, Jack, as you're mentioning. However, 90% of it is based on more closed questions. If we provided you this service, would you utilize it? If we were able to provide this service, would you utilize it? So you're going to go through a full survey. And on top of that, it's community engagement as well. Because we can't look at legislature and say, hey, we're a regional partnership. Will you please give us two, three, four million dollars of earmark funding? to build this building, but on top of it, we need to engage more full-time staff. So Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley, we've got to raise the budget a little bit to accommodate for an additional 16 hours a day to open this facility. So I'll give you one example. Um, would you or anybody on here utilize a gym that was open at six o'clock in the morning to the town of Deerfield residents, somewhat like the YMCA, if it was at the community center, senior center? Would people utilize it? Some people may say, no, I'll never use that. Other people may go, yeah, if it's quiet at 6.30 in the morning, I'll grab a cup of coffee and go in there. So mm -hmm. everything's going to depend on those results. And it's not just Deerfield-based. It's our, our friends and family in Waitley and Sunderland. So, so in other words, the, um, the, um, the surveyors or the pollsters they're theoretically they've created a survey which which does use their experience in what a senior center should be this is what they do yep so they're the then professors to, so then to narrow down for deerfield what what deerfield citizens want sunderland and waitley yes yep that is correct jack so yeah we, so we might be different than you know what uh the, you know, people in Falmouth would sure. want. Yeah, Absolutely. Longmeadow just built a 22,000 square foot building. Yeah, so we're going to be dramatically different where our size is going to be dramatically lower. Yep, and everything's proportionate size and desires. They may say, hey, we want an indoor pool and select boards like we can't afford an indoor pool. Like, no. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But I, I forget the exact terminology. Carolyn may remember or Casey. It professor... Professor of gerontology, is that senior? Yeah, yeah. yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yes, gerontology. Yes. Yes. Gerontology. 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 Not gerontology. Yes. <laughs> There's an ad. <laughs> it's bad internet. I'm not, and I'm not going to say that it, you know, <laughs> what my pronunciation is. Denise, do you have your hand up? I just want to make a suggestion. You know, it's, a, a, you know, a number of us on this. To Zoom tonight are what's considered seniors. But I think when people say seniors, I mean, I still, even though I'm of that age, I don't consider myself. So I think in doing that survey, I'd be really be cautious about calling it a senior center, because I think people have a, a different mm -hmm. vision of what that is, especially if you're going to um, interview people 50 and above. I mean, I started getting, what was it, AARP things at 50. I'm thinking, what the heck are you sending that to me for now? <laughs> but so I think the wording is really important. You know, people's, you know, concept of what a senior center or community center is. 
Agreed. That was, a big, that was a big topic that was brought up at, um, you know, at the presentation that the building advisory committee did at the elementary school when the architect came, he talked a lot about, you know, in, in some towns, you know, a community center works really good because, you know, everyone's together and you have different ages and all that. And he said in other towns, no way do, do the seniors want kids running around. So it was like dividing it by hours. And there is some delicate balance to kind yeah. of discuss because the, the seniors kind of feel like they've uh, been overlooked and paid for things for so many years for, for the younger generation. They're like, well, it's our time. It's our space. It's our building. We've, we've done everything for the kids for so many years and now it's time for us. But I think to make it useful for the community, it does need to be a community center as we all age and we all will use it in some ways. And I think that the, the younger generations will get a lot out of it and the older generations will get a lot out of mm -hmm. younger kids coming to do different events there for, for the seniors or with the seniors. So I do agree with you. Uh, it needs to be a bit, a bit more of a community center for sure. Well, in the, in the um, you know, a senior who's 55 years old and maybe still working and um, might have different needs than a 75-year-old or an 80-year-old. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. They may want to wow. use. So yep. I guess what I'm hearing is, is this, that this needs assessment would be, would be sensitive to that, perhaps? Yes. Oh, Jack, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. We have elders and we have elder elders and right. they the questions are going to be um, directed to each age group. Okay. I can see Jeff's got his hand up, Jack. Oh, Jeff. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I do have a question for Chief, but it's on a different matter. <laughs> All right. So, so where, I don't know, where, where are we at? We... We need to take a vote to remove that 50,000, the old 50,000. Is that where we're, is that our, our next I step? Guess, I guess we vote to, well, we already voted to table it. So just ignore it. It's tabled. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we leave, can, it at that. We can... leave it on the chart as tabled so that um, it's there, but uh, it doesn't go into we... any column for any fiscal year. Well, we could. We could move that to 23 if we wanted to. Just to have it in the back of people's minds? Right. Yes, because we're going to have to do something with the church at some point. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be a different request, Jeff? Are you, or do you want to not change that until you know more from TBAC? I would just kick it into 23 because you, it's going to be, you're going to have to deal with the church at some point and it's going to be anticipated, could be an anticipated cost. And then I would vote the feasibility study, the right. senior center or community center feasibility study for the 42.5. I think that's a good game plan. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So we'll just move the uh, the fifty thousand into twenty twenty three. Did you say? Yeah, FY twenty three. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So just say Jeff moved. Jeff motion. moved. Motion. Jeff motion to move the legacy fifty thousand church. Um, Senior Center Church. Is to uh, 2023 fiscal year. Okay, and is there a second? I think Ken seconded it. Se I'll second it. Oh, Ken seconded it. Yeah. Okay. Problem is that in 2023, isn't there already $150,000 for some reason? Yeah, I that was that to 2024. Do something with it. I would just, just I would just add comment. the fifty thousand, the hundred and fifty. Or do you want to move? Bump one hundred and fifty to twenty four, since it's going to be a study, anyways. So. Yeah, I yep. well, yeah, I would bump it to twenty four. 
So I have 50 in 23 and 150 in 24. Sounds good. That sounds appropriate. Okay, so, so uh, the 50,000 to 2023 and, and the 150,000 that's in 2023 to 2024. Correct. All right, so um, all in favor, uh, Jack Davey, aye. Mark? Mark Brennan, aye. Uh, Ken Cutterback? Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, aye. Skip Sobieski? You're muted, Skip. Skip, Skip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Carolyn Ness? Aye. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Now, I'll make a motion. Uh, we vote and recommend the 42-5 for the Senior Center Needs Assessment and Feasibility Study or the Community Center. I don't know what you want to call it. I'll second that. Second, Carolyn. That was Carolyn? Yes. Okay. I wasn't looking at the screen. Okay. Um, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Um, Mark Brennan? Mark Brennan, aye. Ken Cutterback? Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, aye. Skip Sobieski? Skip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Carolyn Ness? Aye. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. Okay. Um, so uh, I thought uh, since we have John with us, he, maybe he could touch on his exploration of the HVAC system for the police department. And uh, it, you you modified your the request to $100,000. So that now includes both the engineering and the actual construction or, or yeah. yep, replacement? That's what I'm being told. Yep. So what I did is we've been using uh, Dietz Arch Architecture Firm for, um, for just some side consulting work and advice relative to the Senior Center Community Center. And um, we've had a few different meetings with them. And I asked them what HVAC engineering firm they utilized. And they gave me the name. And I did some research. It's a very reputable company out of Adams, Mass. And a lot of different architecture firms utilize them. So uh, the gentleman was actually up in our area. So he stopped by the police station. He walked through. Uh, he looked at the condensers out back. He looked at the air handling units. Looked at a couple of the units up in the ceiling. Um, and... Ultimately, he came back, and I think he was at about $8,900 for the design fee, which uh, I believe, you know, Casey's going to check into, but under $10,000, I think we're good. We could award that. So the design fee is about, I think, $8,950, if my memory serves correct. And he did some quick research on the parts that he felt were needed, and the parts varied. And I shot you guys the direct email, his direct thoughts. Uh, so you guys could literally pour right through it. And there was no misinformation. His parts varied from about 26,000, I think right up to 47,000. However, once you get into public bidding laws and prevailing wage, and depending on how it, the market is when you bid it and who bids on it, your lowest bidder, do you disqualify them or not? He recommended that we, we put uh, $90,000 aside for the actual work itself with materials. So about $9,000 for their firm to engineer it in about $90,000. He's very well sure it's gonna come in under that number, but he would rather us budget high and not have issues. One of the things that Casey and I are exploring is uh, as COVID money starts to flow back into the community, can we utilize that funding stream to go ahead and take care of the HVAC system so we don't have to take money from town meeting? Would that be a good supplemental use of the COVID-19 funding. And that's where I really would rely on the CIPC's thoughts. 
You mean you mean like federal funding? Yes. Yep. As part of the one point nine trillion dollar relief package, there's going to be a lot of money floating into the local level. Uh, word is is you know upwards uh, near or over a million dollars to the town of Deerfield. I think we're going to get estimated one point two to one point four million. We're not. We haven't been able to narrow it down any more than that. But we certainly can uh, justify replacing this under the COVID money. Yeah, we just got to look at what restrictions they place on it coming down. But I think Carolyn's correct. Um, and that I think it's a, a valuable use of funds that would last us another 25 to 30 years. So, but I definitely defer back to everybody's thoughts here with CIPC. I myself, Jeff Upton, I, I would recommend that we uh, make a motion to bring the $50,000 up to $100,000. And I would recommend that we vote to recommend, if that makes sense, at the $100,000 for the police HVAC design and construction, design engineering and construction. I would second that, Ms. Carolyn. I just have a question. Sure, go ahead, Denise. You know, I know in, in my former job, you know, we did receive a lot of COVID money and, you know, we had to justify that it was actually for people or, you know, affected by COVID. And so I, I guess I don't, I haven't been able to connect the dots on this one. You have to have good. Um, you have to have, from a public health point of view, you have to have good ventilation and. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Got it. Yeah, one of the good. things we want to do, Denise, is to make sure that we're legal in it. The word right. coming out of Washington D.C. right now is this money's going to have much less strings attached to it. Excellent. It's going to be much more realistic. The last time they came through and there was so many strings attached to it that yeah. our reporting <laughs> mechanisms were ungodly. Right. So, yes, but we were able to take advantage of some things like the schools were going to replace, um, you know, put, give the kids laptops anyway. So right. we had put 65,000 aside for that. Well, you know, you would be able to do it under COVID. So that's this great. Will, this will be the same similar thing. Um, we're, we got to just make sure that whatever money we spend, obviously is related to COVID, but um, if we can justify it and do things that we really were going to do anyway, this is best way to spend the money. No, that's well, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I would well, just say the, the bids on HVAC are, are, are going to be high in the next coming year with all the work that's going to be done at the schools. Um, you know, we're just, we just got sub bids back on the, on the, um, wastewater treatment plant, those are, those, we only got one bid. Everybody's just, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't need the work. So it's really, um, I think we're gonna find over the next couple of years gonna be a challenge to get HVAC work done and we'll, we'll pay for it. So I, I, I agree that it makes sense to kind of up that to a hundred to cover for sure. Um, I, yeah, and I don't, I don't think it's really up to our committee to decide where the money where the money comes from. It'd be great if it comes from if it comes Grant. comes yes. from the federal government or you know. But you know, yep. I mean, who knows? You may we may find some other reason to use it for for something else. I don't I don't yep. know. In any case, yep. I'm in I'm in favor of um, uh, Jeff's motion to. Um, uh, bring the request up to a hundred thousand dollars. So, so we've got well, a motion. Yeah, I was just going to say, add in that um, we, we get inspected on an annual basis from the Department of Public Health, mm -hmm. and actually, we won't have much choice in this anyway. Right. Yeah. So, um, so we've got a motion and a second to increase the request for the police station HVAC to a hundred thousand dollars. Um, all in, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Uh, Brennan, aye. Brennan, uh, Ken Cutterback. Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, aye. Kip Sobieski. Kip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton. Jeff Upton, aye. And Carolyn Ness. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right, so the motion carries unanimously. Thanks, everybody. If it makes you feel any better, Yarmouth PD just came back at 4.2 million. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
39,000 square foot building. Oh my God. Yep. Oof. Anything else, uh, Jack, uh, why am uh, I? I don't think so. Any other, anyone else have so any, we, any other questions for Jeff or for I John? Know, yeah, I know we tabled the senior center roof and that was because it really doesn't appear to be necessary at this point in time, is that correct? Right. Yeah, I had a, um, a, a slate expert come in that does all the Deerfield Academy work. Uh, they're out of Westfield and West Springfield. They have two different um, places they call home and they do amazing work. They've been doing it for about 39 years. And he walked up in there. He crawled up in the attic. He looked at all the dust points up there and he said, you really don't have a leak. And he walked outside and he was amazing. I forget his name. It's, it's all in my phone and in my email. He goes, John, I can tell you the year of all the slate up there. He goes, that's 120 year old slate right there. That slate up there is 110 year old slate. I can tell you what quarry it came out of. I'm like, are you kidding me? Really? Yeah, so my hand is good. Describing, depending on the, the tint of it, uh, whether it's getting worn or not. And he said, honestly, if you're going to be doing construction to that building, do not touch it. So I said, you know, how much to put a new slate roof on there? And God, you don't want to know that. <laughs> he told me the same exact thing. He says, you don't even want to know. He yeah. said, trust me, you're going to go with asphalt. So. We, we don't have Deerfield's endowment. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, there's nothing we need to do with the roof in the next literally one to two years until we figure this out. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Great. What else, Jeff? Jack, anything am I missing? Uh, I don't think we have anything else for you, John. No. No, that was that was going to be my question for you, Chief. What the slate roof, Jeff? No, no, no. The HVAC, as far as the okay. hundred thousand. Good, good, good. Yeah, so hopefully we covered. can use the COVID money. Hopefully it doesn't have any as many strings and yep, less money coming out of free cash. Before you go, John, I just had a quick question. Did you get my um, email link? The link for the meeting yes. on Thursday. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yep. All right. All set. Thanks. Denise, if it makes you feel any better, I'm a junior. I've been getting AARP cards since I was like 25. <laughs> uh, thanks, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. Hi, everybody. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Well, I'm way past 25. <laughs> <laughs> By a few years. Join the crowd. <laughs> really uh, jack could i make a motion to then remove the senior center roof from this chart just so it's not there for future discussion at this point in time i would second that Okay, so uh, uh, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Uh, Mark Brennan? Mark Brennan, aye. Ken Cutterback? Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, aye. Skip Sobieski? Skip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton? Jeff Upton, aye. And Carolyn Ness? Aye, Carolyn Ness. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay, so the, ne the next thing on our agenda is we were, we were supposed to try to prioritize and um, I did get a, Casey, you did send me an email a little while ago and I don't, I don't think you sent it to everyone. And maybe we should, I, I just wanna read what Casey said, she, she said she has a financial update of sorts. With the updated school budgets input into the budget spreadsheet, it appears that there will be no free cash to support capital projects. If the yeah, finance I committee- I sent it to everybody, Jack. Oh, you did, okay. Yeah, I blind carbon copied it so okay. that I tried to present, prevent discussion amongst the members, but notify everybody okay. of the situation. That's fine. So, uh, if the, if the finance committee and select board want to hold approximately 300,000 aside in free cash, so which I think they, sh they should, just my opinion, 
Um, and she, you went on to say that we do have money in our stabilization accounts that could be used. Um, but I, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what that means. What does that, so, that's a pretty strong statement that there's no, there's no funds for capital. capital uh, that's if, not what I said. Typically Deerfield pays for capital projects out of free cash, but it doesn't have to. Capital projects, particularly the, those related to assets, capital assets like buildings, those are things that you can use stabilization for because the intent of maintaining a capital asset is to have it for a significant period of time and make it usable. So what I said was there's other stabiliz there's other funds you can use. You don't have to use free cash. So is the select board and the finance committee considering using? Jack, it's too That's premature. That's why I suggested everybody point. meet. Yeah. 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 It's and, too premature. So the, you know, we could do no capital projects is one idea. We could do, um, we could see, you know, as we get further along into this, what we might have and what we could do um, with any free cash we may have, or we could, pull some money from capital stabilization or general stabilization to do some projects that we want to do, or we could decide, decide to, um, you know, borrow money and, and fund that part of the print, you know, come up with a financial plan to, to fund, um, you know, say we borrow for 10 years to do a project and we would, we would pay that back out of capital stabilization, some interest in some principal. And we really have to kind of, Really, all come together and talk about the the projects that we want. And, and we don't and we don't know how much money um, you know ultimately we're going to get from the federal government yet. I mean, that's going to be very impactful. It'll be impactful on the on the school budgets, and then ultimately it'll be impactful on our our budget as well. So, mm. um, you know, that hasn't been even considered yet because it's still um, you know basically an unknown. Although we know we're going to get a slug of money somehow. And that's what really saved us last year was, you know, the CARES Act money. And we were very good about making sure that um, that paid for things that we had to buy, but also would defray some of the costs um, that we were faced with anyway. So, I mean, it was, we handled it really well. And we have FEMA reimbursements still coming in. So it's hard, I mean, it's really hard at this point to um, say exactly where money's coming from, but we do have money. It's just, we're well, not I, sure. I, I guess my question, I know Ken and, Ken and um, Mark both had their, their hands up, but I guess my question is how do we prioritize if we don't really know, you know, I mean, I, I spent a little time going through the list and creating my own prioritization, you know, and. And to me, it meant some projects would, would just be out. Yeah. Yep. But, but, you, um, but, you know, I'm hearing that, well, maybe, maybe they're not, maybe they're, so how do we, how do we prioritize? That's well, my, that's, that's what's behind my, my What question. are we required to do? The HVAC system is a required thing because we are going to be inspected by DPH and, and we will not pass. So that is a required. Um, and the continued, uh, the continuing work on the, on the sewage treatment plant is, has to continue. Correct. Yes. With more to come. We have a lot yeah. more work to do there. Oh. So a, anyway, that's just my, that's just my, my comment slash question. Yeah. No, it's um, good. Ken, you had your hand oh, up. Let Mark go first. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, my, my question was basically going to be what happens with that $5.7 million uh, for the wastewater treatment plant? You know, um, is that is that something that's in, included um, in in well, not included, but, you know, are, are we saying that uh, that that money um, would have to come from somewhere else as well, like a capital stabilization no. fund? No, because no, that's, no. we've already that's proved that. On, yeah, that okay. went out, uh, Mark. That went out to um, to town vote, and seventy five percent is paid by the sewer users, which are also taxpayers, and then twenty five percent 
our board by the gen uh, by the general fund, which is everybody in town, whether you're on it or not, pays pays 25 percent. So that money um, is already in the works, and it and we have a loan from USDA. Once once we get through the financing, when we're all done with the construction, USDA gives us a loan for 40 years at just over two percent. So that that will be going forward no matter what, and that's really that's the first phase of the project. Then there's another phase. And then there's old Deerfield to deal, to deal with. So the, the, the sewer is just a massive project that's going to take years and years and years, that's 40 years. A to massive get. ongoing project that's kind yep. of on the on the yep outside of the of the budget that we're really talking. And about. that's more like borrowing, right? And so that's why I said, you know, that most of pro, most capital projects that we do, we try to find a way to kind of have excess. I shouldn't say excess, but kind of excess money out of the budget each year to kind of knock off these capital projects and then at some point you wind up realizing well some of the projects are too large to be able to do that we will probably have to borrow for them if we do the same we did the school roof that way you know it's too much money for us to kind of pull out of free cash and stuff so the town got together and said let's borrow for several years to pay this off and so those projects we may have to do but the smaller ones like the 10 the, you know even fifty thousand, those kind of things we try to find ways to pay for um, out of free cash or other, you know, other revenue. So right, with you. Yep. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Ted. Um, yeah. I, uh, I just, as I was going through this, um, I think we're an advice, if I, unless I misread the chart, the, um, bylaws, uh, we're an advisory group. Right. We, we, we review the requests, we recommend them into a fiscal year. We're not here to figure out how to fund them. Um, right. We do right. have to recognize that they may not be funded. And I think that's why we were talking about ranking them. Therefore, if we give a ranking and say to the finance committee and select board, and then we meet as a joint group, that's fine to discuss it. But if we say, these are the ones we think are important for fiscal 22, these are the way we would rank them in terms of orders of priority based on available funds yep. and take it from there um, and come to agreement on the final recommendations coming out of the finance committee and select board as we head to town meeting. I, that seems to me the most logical sequence to follow as, as this group, but I, I could be wrong. Jeff's, Jeff's been through this much more in depth than I have, but that, that's what I would propose. And I would also point out there are three items on here that are funded um, outside of free cash and outside of uh, general town funds. You've got right. the uh, roadside mower, the yep. asphalt paving, and the exhaust system at SKIMS. So th those three items can, from my estimation, would just move forward sort of with an asterisk. They don't need to be ranked. Um, and we go from there and just decide what our priority, what we feel are the priorities for the projects that we've discussed so far. I'll turn it over to Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, Ken, very, very good summary because I, I agree with Ken on, on just about everything there. Uh, very quickly, being a member of finance committee for the last several years, uh, uh, Carolyn's right that, and Trevor, uh, that we generally, finance committee generally tries to maintain uh, around the $300,000, if not a little bit more balance uh, as far as free cash after everything is said and done. And then I think Ken's right as far as going through, it's not our decision on funding. And we know money right now is a little bit up in the air because we're not sure uh, what the federal will do for us. We're not sure what the state will do for us. And so if we went through and uh, more or less did a ranking of, of the things that we have voted a yes for, and I'm more than willing, I went through this several times, I'm more willing to throw myself on the sword here and go down through and give my rankings in the rationale why I ranked them mm -hmm. uh, if people want and we can walk down through and if we agree on stuff, great. If we disagree, just set it aside and come back to it. Yeah. But I've 
I'm kind of like Ken. There's some things that are pretty straightforward as well, far as I think, as far as the ranking. What do we think the things are, the, the items are that have to be done this year? Well, the number one on the back side of that on the capital plan, on the second page on the capital plan, number one is the wastewater treatment plant upgrades. We don't have any choice in that. Right. That's that's an automatic. Number two, as Ken referred to, uh, the roadside mower there. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a wash because that's a twenty-six thousand dollar kickback from EverSource, so it's a reimbursement. Right. So that's not costing us anything. Number three and four are the skims items, the asphalt paving and the exhaust system, because that's being funded and paid for through uh, the rent monies. So that, that is self-funded. Number five, I had ranked, and believe it or not, even though I abstained to this, the whacker, as far as the sidewalk cleaning, and sweep the plow and that that's a need we don't have any choice we need to do our sidewalks mm -hmm. uh it's not a i don't believe it's a want it'd be nice right. if it wasn't cadillac but at the same time it's a it's a definite need mm -hmm. so i had that, that rank number five if you flip flip the page back to the front if you take a look at the police department, even with the increase of 100,000 up to the $100,000, I rank that number six because that needs to be done. It's not, it's not like that building's only gonna be there for two or three years. That right. building is gonna be there for another 20, 25 years. And I don't think we should try to do the Band-Aid fix to it with the mini splits. I think it's worth, worth the effort here to spend the money now if if we can get some covid money to cover that that's great mm -hmm. even if we don't that building is a town building it needs to be it needs to be done for the safety of the public so to me that's a that's a no brainer well and that's and also fixed. i just want to add that again dph does an annual inspection um for the cell that we have there and if, and if it doesn't meet those standards, then we fail and it becomes mandatory. So right. um, it, it is actually, I mean, it's no different than the wastewater treatment plant. You know, you had your mandatory to fix it up so we can flush the toilets. All right. So then number seven and eight, I went to the Deerfield Elementary School. These are ongoing projects and I right. hate to see those get stopped in midstream. The, the, no pun intended here, with the restrooms, <laughs> they just, you know, it's, it's a need. And then you get into the replacement of the flooring yeah. and uh, that's, that's for 2022. And my understanding of it, even though it's the 21-2, that will pretty much complete the replacement of the flooring for the time being. Yeah. So I yeah. thought that was, I thought that would be a pretty solid thing to, to continue. Yep. Then I flipped back over or down to the second page. And we just discussed this, the senior center needs assessment feasibility. I had ranked for number nine because we've talked about this for years yeah. and it's time we do something for either be a community building or a senior center. It, we need to move forward on this. Mm -hmm. We've got two buildings sitting there, including the church that we're up in the air about. And we've got to, as a town, we need to get ourselves focused and start to move on that. And then that was number nine. Number 10, I had the municipal office repairs. You have a building, again, that's a town asset. We know that the back deck there needs to be addressed. 
you're you're facing a liability issue there. Now, what I would like to see there, though, we have sixty thousand. What I would like to see there, though, is for the highway department, whoever's in charge, come up with a list of specific needs tied into the uh, assessment of that building, as far as a building committee assessment. So, you know, I, just painting windows doesn't get it. If I, the windows need to be replaced, yep. let's do that. Can I hit that real quick? Go ahead, uh, Jeff. Trevor. Um, talking to Kevin, I think he's got, uh, he's got those repairs going pretty quick and may happen in this fiscal year. Uh, out of oh. some money that he may have out of his budget and some help from um, nonprofits. So I think that that aspect might happen, but you're right. There is another list that was done out of that GLRA um, that ranks kind of all that stuff that needs to get done. So, right, we should look at what's the most important things that need to happen and can that pare down, you know, in that first year. Right. So some of that's going to get addressed. Yep. I, I agree. And then I had for uh, 11 and 12, I had the building inspection as far as the permitting software and the archiving and the paperwork that's involved now that the uh, town requires, state requires, it that's just something that needs to be done. Number 13, I had the uh, website conversion for the town. And then 14, depending on money, was the asphalt sidewalk repairs. And if we do get you know, money help, I would probably rank that up higher. But if it's going to have to right. come out of general funds, yeah. and I, I know they need to be addressed. Now, one thing I am going to address after that was uh, the capital stabilization fund. I hate to say that kind of comes into a last again, because I'd love yeah. to fund that, but it depends on what we get again from federal and state. If we get right. money to take care of some of these other issues, then then great, let's, let's try to do that capital stabilization fund. One thing that I didn't address yet, and it can be for discussion here, is the Frontier Regional School and Ken, thank you very much for getting that information back to us as far as the ducks and mm -hmm. the curtain. Uh, a couple of things there as far as the funding. The duck cleaning, that's gonna come out of COVID money. I can't believe that that wouldn't qualify for COVID money. It should, I, it, I, should. I, it should. It should. <clears throat> it should, you know, that, that should be covered by COVID money. That shouldn't have to come from the town general fund. And then on the curtain uh, replacement, uh, seeing how, who knows, things are looking pretty tight here money-wise. And I don't know, I asked Casey this, but I'm not sure as far as what's left in the E&D money. Uh, about a month ago, we got an email and they had over $500,000 in that account for the E&D monies. And for, I believe it was $30,000 price tag for a curtain, I would hope if the town is facing all these other things that they could squeeze 30,000 out of that E&D money. Um, I and can skip yeah. some point here, I will probably put you on the spot and ask you, in your uh, in the assessors, how all this once we figure out where this money's coming from, how this is going to impact the tax rate on the town. So that's that's it's what I did. Go up. How I did. Can you just yeah. give us a set of real quickly, <laughs> Thanks, Skip. Skip. Give us give, give us a quick view, Jeff. I would say that um, the E and D from Frontier. A lot, a lot of it has been earmarked, but they're also they're in such a state of flux as well with uh, COVID uh, grants and everything that's coming down the pipeline that these numbers are changing pretty, pretty drastically. We started out over seven percent on the budget for the elementary school. We're down 
in uh, around 3.1, is it, Trevor, yeah. I think? Yeah. Uh, and the latest three. budget. Um, I know that at Frontier, their E and D, uh, while it looked like it was 500, it's being the numbers have been run up the flagpole again, and they're yeah. they're not really clear on what they have. Uh, this, okay. So the curtain request, it, it's a safety issue because they they're required to have it meet um, fire standards, and it's not going to meet standards. But until their their picture is really clear. Um, at, at least that portion of it could might we might consider it. Uh, you know, our our share of it is not not a great amount of money. The fifteen two is our share of both projects together. So, right. Um, right. if if it ends up just being the thirty, admittedly the thirty thousand is most most of the I, cost. But I'm yeah, pretty, I'm pretty sure Casey um, knows that we frontier hasn't gotten or union 38 hasn't gotten their fema reimbursement yet either so i mean we haven't either carolyn nobody yeah, has no been. i know so we so, don't know what right. we have left yeah i mean so it, it's really hard i mean but believe me if yeah. the numbers if the numbers on their e and d support it i i'm they confident would. that darius and shelly will will pull that request and cover it with their e and d but they put this request in in good faith because of all that they've got going on. A lot of the END, I think, is or a fair portion of it is being earmarked towards. Is it the track renovations? Yes, got and the track and the fence, and then the um, reduced assessments a couple hundred fencing, thousand. Right. Yep. Um, so yep. there there are things going on with the END that they've chosen to take on the added costs that have come in on the track renovations and the fencing and things like that. And that's depleting the E&D as well. So it's it's yeah. it's all moving parts everywhere in all the yeah. towns at the, at all the schools as well. So um, yeah, no, I understand completely, Ken, with what you're saying. So we'll get a better picture. So we'll, did you no get all the you, you were still running down? Did you get through all of them? <laughs> well, how about yeah. the uh, how about the building inspections, electronic archiving? Yeah, he had that yeah, at uh, that was, twelve. That, I had I had that ranked as eleven and twelve. Oh, you get that eleven and twelve software. That's and where the, you, okay. permitting eleven, archiving twelve. Correct. And I missed what thirteen was. That was the website conversion yep, for the right. town. What about the paving, Jeff? Uh, the police department paving was that on there? The police. The police depart, uh, department paving, I, I'm i sorry to say, but I put that after the sidewalks yep. only, only because it would be nice to do if we could afford it, but we may have to put that off for a year. And I'd like to just mention, I'm still working to try and get kind of a, a, a master plan of these projects together and how that fits in and how the senior center parking lot fits in and the common and the complete street. So I uh, hope to have a meeting with, you know, our design team in, uh, in a week or so and try to get us all together around some sort of, as, as you just did, Jeff, that was a great prioritization of what our needs are. And, you know, you're right. And some of these things are, we need them, but do we need them this year or next year, you know, and how, how it all fits together. And I, I think, a little more planning involved might, might be needed to before we go off and, and bite $140,000. I was just going to say I'm 100% in that sentiment. I, before we put any new paving down, I want to make sure it's in the right place. Yep. And <laughs> it's what we want. So I'm not adverse to supporting the project. But right. I don't want to do the project too early and then have to rip up pavement at a later date. It yeah. all depends on what we're exactly. using our buildings for at some point. Yeah. And you have a central plan. Where is the parking going to be? Yeah. And I, I it agree. Makes, it I does see. make sense to have those, like a dedicated entrance and exit for the police. That, that's a safety issue. Them coming around this building when ball, you know, right now we don't have a lot of sports, but when the kids are back and the ball fields are there, it's just dangerous. So I agree with John. It needs to be an in and out on that end. Um, and how we achieve that and then deal with the rest of the parking out here is important. But I think there is, there does need to be a little bit more planning involved. So, right. 
Casey? And I, I just wanted to mention if other people have ideas and would rather have stuff ranked differently, that is fine with me. Mm -hmm. I'm all ears. Casey? You're, You're muted. muted. <laughs> you are muted. <laughs> this is why I'm mute, because I talk to myself. Um, so to Jeff's last comment, in terms of the archiving versus the server, if that server goes down, we lose the ability to work in the town offices. So I would say the server is more important than the archiving. Not, I, this, not the inspection software, but the archiving. I and just, I actually yeah. talked to the building commissioner about that today because I was concerned. I knew we were meeting and I wanted to get his take on it. And the inspection software is more of a critical problem for him. And it's really become apparent during COVID. The, so flip the 12 and 13. Well, the yes. file server we haven't acted on because we, we were waiting on a quote. I'm That's still why. waiting on a quote. I think it's going to be, be between uh, 30 and 35, Ken, but I'm not That's positive. The Northeast IT is, is the I think manager that's what, I, that I'm just saying, I think that's why Jeff skipped it in his ranking. I, I, I yeah, absolutely we were, was going I'm to... still waiting for a quote, but it's actually probably more critical if we don't get that replaced because it won't be supported as yeah. of this year. Our, our tech expert over there, Mark, needs to jump in here and say something profound. <laughs> I know. I was going to give it to you, Mark, but I don't have it yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I might know some people on the inside at Northeast IT, so let me know oh, if sure. you want that expedited. Great. Tell Thank Joel you. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to yell at him too much. <laughs> uh, well, Jack, oh, do we do we want to just put a number in next to file server and it can be adjusted later? Um, what do you want to do? Well, we what can, does the committee want to do? I, I, to be honest, I kind of lost track of the numbers. I guess but, 35. Uh, uh, but Casey's saying that she would rather see it ahead of the permitting software, right? Not the permitting software. Um, not the, the permitting archive. software the, ahead the of the archiving. electronic archiving. The electronic archiving. Right. Uh, Jeff, I didn't put numbers on each of the priorities. I put check marks on the priorities. So um, I might need to start over with your priority list in terms okay. of your numbers. No, if you want me to report number? it right this second. No, no, no. Well, I want to make sure everybody feels comfortable. I, I'm, I'm just, I was just throwing that out. As yeah. a sample, it's just a general discussion. Now, yeah. right, Casey, uh, on the file server, you would put that after the permitting software and before the archiving, as far as building inspector. I would put the file server ahead of the archiving. Okay. And after the permitting. and the permitting software need, is a priority because it makes it difficult for us to help the trades get the permits they need for the work that they're doing, and it's pretty heavy, as as Trevor will tell you. It's very busy in the trades right now, and if they can't get an expedited permit, it makes it hard for them to do their work. And that's an actual, as defined by the governor, that's an essential service. We realized that we weren't able to respond as quickly once COVID hit. Okay, so the building permitting comes after the municipal office repairs and then the file server and then the electronic archiving for the, for the- uh, Correct. So, so- And then the website. <laughs> and- Another one of those COVID things <laughs> that really blew up in our faces. Yes. It'd be worse. It could be the state. I agree. <laughs> um, All right. Well, I think I got it. I don't. I think I got Jack, it. In in the midst of all this, Jack, I wonder if I I could make a motion to um, 
for the committee to recommend $35,000 for the town office file server in fiscal 22, just to get it moved one column over. That way it becomes part of this ranking discussion. Okay. I'll second that second. motion. Yes, Jeff. Jeff okay. seconded. Second. Okay, any discussion about that? Um, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Uh, where's my list? Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan. <laughs> Mark Brennan, aye. Ben Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Gip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton, Jeff Upton aye. Carolyn Ness. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. That's it was excellent work. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and the motion carries unanimously. Okay. So, so did we did we miss anything that? Only the tabled items. Yeah. yeah. Which uh, I'm working on the uh, estimate for the common work. We're probably somewhere around two hundred and fifty thousand to three hundred thousand for that, but I still don't have any numbers on that. Just I know I told you I would get you some figures when I get them, and I don't have them yet, but they're coming. All right, so that's that's moved into the future anyway. Yep. Well, I, I don't, I mean, I don't have a problem with this priority list. I, I think it's a good priority list. Yeah. You know, the, the as Jeff says, the first, the first four, five, six, six items are must. No. The DES items are, it, it would be a shame to, to hold them up when they're, you know, they've been making good progress for years. Mm -hmm. It seems like the senior needs assessment and feasibility, if we're gonna move forward on that at all, we gotta do that. And then the remaining items, I mean, I, I think it's a good good priority list and you know, the, the select board and the finance committee will have to figure out if they wanna move on those. Right. Wow. I'm until you get to the paving of the sidewalks and the municipal paving, it's about four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Just oh. doing a rough tabulation that we'd be looking for in funds, and that does you know that's excluding the roadside mower, the skims, and the wastewater treatment. So, <clears throat> but I think I think it. I mean, I I don't personally don't disagree with. Uh, most of what Jeff came up with, I didn't quite have the whacker as high, but uh, yep. in thinking in retrospect, yes, they, we do need it for clearing the sidewalks and other other issues uh, around mm -hmm. town. So it just moved up two spaces on mine. That's all. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So do we need a vote to uh, to uh, set the priority list? In stone or that would is... be helpful. Okay. Do you want that would be helpful. That way I can I can codify that in the mm -hmm. report in the the spreadsheet. But like I said, I wasn't following all of Jeff's numbers. So Jeff, do you wanna I can would run it help if Jeff repeats and it fun. and then you guys could take a vote? Okay, so you so we if Jeff can vote the piece. That's Are a we good... going to vote these individual, Jack? What's that? What? Are we going to vote these individual, or are we just no. going to run down through a priority list and vote the list? We could just vote the. I think we can just vote the list. Yeah, but I think it's a good idea. Does it, does anyone? Uh, yeah, but before you do that, why don't you ask if anybody has anything they'd like to see moved? <laughs> if not, then, then okay. you can. Then Jeff, Jeff can review his list again. Casey? I would just say maybe we move the building inspections electronic filing one year. So move the 35,000 
to FY23 and then have 35 in FY24 and 25 in FY25. So shift it like you've shifted a few of these other projects. So the you're saying the electronic archiving on the build inspectors shifted out of FY22 into FY23? Yes. Just a suggestion. Are they in agreement with that? I think that, like I said before, Ken, I think they would prefer to get the inspections permitting software. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> first. And if I can find another way to pay for that, I'm working on it. I'm waiting for FEMA. FEMA is the bane of my existence right now. But functionally, we need the, so the server, the office file absolutely. server, before we need the archiving. <clears throat> is he going to love me tomorrow? Probably not. But if he gets his inspection, his permitting software, he might be okay. <laughs> okay, so, so somebody want to make a motion to move the building inspection archiving? Jack, software. can I jump in just for a second? Yeah, yeah. Please. In, instead of, in, we could kick it over another year. Or what we could do is kick it down on the priority list. We could renumber that to a lower priority. And that way, if money comes up, becomes available, you'd still be able to do it in FY22. So you want to put it just at the end after the paving? Of put it the before the paving. What's that? Yeah. I put right it before, before the paving. paving. I would just swap the website and the archiving. I agree. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. No, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> can't read my handwriting now. Well, Jeff's going to read the list to us. Okay, That's a so, good thing. so we got, <laughs> I might make a new list here. Maybe if Jeff goes through it, I'll put in the priorities and the numbers, and then I can, I can even, I'm working on that right now. I could probably send it out to you after we're done, or even if, if we went through it quickly, I could probably send it out. That would be great. Uh, Denise has to leave in a couple of minutes, though. Yeah, so, well, I've got a meeting at seven. I've got 12 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so it should, take, uh, yeah. should take Jeff 12 minutes to read through his list, right? Yeah, Come on, so, Jeff, hit it. Yeah, just read <laughs> yeah, I might just have we might just have to do one change, but all right. As far as wastewater treatment plant upgrades on the on the back side or on the second bottom half yeah. is number one. Number yeah. two is roadside mower. You let's put the dollar amounts in it there, Jeff, too. So five million okay. seven twenty-four. Right. Five million seven hundred and twenty four thousand dollars. Number one. Number two is the roadside mower at twenty six thousand dollars. And that is a reimbursement from Eversource. Mm -hmm. Number three is the asphalt pavement paving for skims at twenty five thousand. And that's reimbursement through or, or rent money paying for that. The exhaust system is number four for skims at thirty thousand, and again, that's rent paying rent money paying for that. Number five is the multi-purpose whacker uh, for the highway department at a hundred and five thousand for the sidewalk snow blowing and sweeping. Number six is $100,000 for the police HVAC design, engineering, and construction. Number seven is the Deerfield Elementary restroom renovations Number uh, for $15,300. Number eight is for the Deerfield Elementary replacement flooring for $21,200. Flipping back over, number nine is the Senior Center Needs Assessment Feasibility Study slash Community Center, maybe, uh, at $42,500. Number 10 
Number 10 is the municipal office repairs for $60,000, coming up with a list for that. Number 11 is the building inspectors permitting software for $15,500. Number 12 is for the website conversion at $48,000. Number 13 is the town, uh, excuse me, yeah, the town office fi file server for $35,000. Number 14 on the back side is the asphalt sidewalk repairs for $500. $503,324. Number 15, where am I? Apple stabilization. We just did something here. Number 15, we Municipal that. paving. Yes, municipal paving. Thank you. Mis municipal office paving. Number 15, I had an arrow drawn there. Number 16 was uh, capital stabilization fund for $250,000. And number 17 is the electronic archiving building inspectors for $35,000. Did I miss anything? Jeff, it's Casey, was two the um, roadside mower? Yes. Two okay, was right, roadside mower. Yep. Yep. Of 26,000. Um, how about the frontier requests? The frontier request, we uh, hopefully the COVID money. And Ken, I, do we want to vote the curtain money? I, I think we should vote. I think what I sent was a note just saying we could vote it all or we could just, I mean, it's $15,000. So um, if we want to just vote the, the curtain, I'm not sure exactly what I, I don't have the uh, document in front of me right now, what that, that amount was. So that was $30,000, I believe. Yeah, but our share of it that she our had outlined it to me. Our share is $65,32.15. 6532 dollars 50 cents yeah so the the big hit was actually the ductwork um i mean it i you know personally i would just recommend the whole thing but uh, you, you know if it's just the curtain that's fine too if you want to pull the 9000 out for the ductwork <clears throat> What, whoever makes a motion, I'll support whatever they make. <laughs> I think they'll probably try to get the COVID, right? So I, I agree with Ken to vote the whole thing. Vote the whole the thing. Whole thing then we can I, figure out the final. I'm so, hoping that by the time we go to town meeting, it, it, yep. the, the duct cleaning is going to be a moot point. I mean, they, right. they, it's, in their, it's in their target sites. It's yeah. just they didn't have the funding yet, so they did it. So I'd make a mo I'll make a motion to fund fifteen thousand three hundred twenty-four dollars for. Is that what the total was? Two hundred forty-two dollars. I'm sorry, yep. for uh, the frontier. I'll second that. I'll second that. Duct cleaning and curtain. Then we can prioritize it down near the bottom. Okay. Uh, all in favor. Jack Davey, I. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, I. Ken Cutterback. I. Ken Cutterback, I. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, I. Skip Sobieski. Skip Sobieski, I. Jeff Upton. Jeff Upton, I. Carolyn Ness. I. Okay, and the motion carries unanimously. And so we would rank that at number 18. Sounds Correct. Like it. And everybody, 
I I hope I didn't overstep tonight. Not at all. Not at all. And I apologize. No, no, I think all. you did a great job. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Jeff. You made it really go well, fast. That was, better than the, that was better than the list I had done. So yeah. I appreciate your preparation better more than mine. I make a motion that we accept Jeff's list as stated. I second that. Okay. Let's vote. I got to go five minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Jack Davey, aye. Mark, Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, aye. Ken Cutterback. Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise Mason, aye. Kip Sobieski. Kip Sobieski, aye. Jeff Upton. Jeff Upton, aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Denise. You're well, you're well. Thank Don't you thank everyone. me. Thank Jeff. Thank I know, you, but Jeff thank you Anthony. For hanging hey, thank in you there. both. Wait, who is yeah, the second? No. Who is the second on this? Ken? Everybody. Carolyn. Me. Carolyn. 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 <laughs> we have a good team here. Yep, you do. All right. Absolutely. Well, everyone's trying to work together, and that's really important because we've got to make you. decisions that best for the town. Yep. Okay, so next meeting, what we're getting close to our deadline. So is is our next meeting with the select board? Um, I think so. Um, April seventh. Casey, can we put it on the agenda for a joint meeting? Yes. If you want me to put it on for the a joint meeting for Capital and the select board. I might suggest that we invite the finance committee just yes. so they can see that conversation. Yep. Yeah, we need to we need to run this by the finance committee. So finance has a meeting next week, Jeff. I won't be there, but finance has a meeting. It might be useful if capital wants to present their draft priorities list. That's not a bad time to do it. When was it again? Finance has a meeting on the 30th at 5 o'clock. Five. I think. Yep, 5 to 7. And, and I have to post a meeting of the CIPC to attend that, right? Correct. If the entire committee is going to attend. If you're just going to attend to, pre to present the draft uh, priorities list, then you can attend on your own if your committee so chooses to volunteer you. <laughs> Don't you uh, love me? Make a motion to volunteer Jack to go to that committee. <laughs> <laughs> Just me a second now. Denise has to get that in before she leaves. <laughs> I got one minute. Well, I they need I, me for a quorum, so I've got to yeah. It, it usually works. It usually works that whoever isn't here gets volunteered, Denise. So you go to your meeting, and we'll we'll figure out. <laughs> I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> Good try, Ken. Darn. So the second was Carolyn. Yeah. And all in favor? Jack Davy, I. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, I. Ken Cutterback. Ken Cutterback, I. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, I. Gip Sobieski. Gip Sobieski, I. Jeff Upton. Jeff Upton, aye. And Carolyn Ness? Aye. And the motion carries unanimously. Casey? Thanks. Casey? Yes. Or Jack? Yes. Somebody, you just want to make sure that Jack gets put on the uh, finance committee's agenda to present? I was going to send Julie and Brenda an email right now. Great. Okay, very okay. good. Jack, I obviously I will be there because be I there. sit on the finance committee. Right. So I can I can assist you if need be. Okay, that's that sounds good. Excellent. All right. So does someone is there any any other discussion or any other issues? Ooh. Were we shooting? Are we still going? I, I realize we've got a representative going to a finance committee meeting, but are we still going to have a joint meeting with the 
select board and finance committee on this was it the seventh yeah we could set something up on the seventh um you know like at the beginning of the agenda like we have in the years past yeah just get everybody together and we have everybody. the finance committee has april 6th scheduled for a meeting okay from five to seven just to give you a heads up yeah uh, and but uh School committees are in a yeah, joint school, school committee meeting with the whole Definitely. union and region that night. Yep. So that's right. I'd be okay. unavailable. I've got to chair that meeting. I'll be gone too. So, so April seventh at what time, Casey? Do you want to go for six, Carolyn? Um, wait, Trevor's not going to be there either. Well, I'll be there on the seventh because I'll be there. I'll be at the sixth. I've got the school committee, so I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. Let's, is the, let's do it at six, uh, Casey. Are you looking for a joint meeting with the finance, the select board, and in the capital improvement committee on the seventh? I'd love it. Yes. What we've done in the past, just, Jeff. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking that you may want to notify the uh, Julie, the finance committee, and maybe she can kick that meeting from the sixth. To the seventh. Oh, okay. Yeah, see what she wants to do. Right. That way they might be able to just yeah. yeah. Have that one meeting instead of two nights in a row. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The idea is just to have a public hearing like we know have done before. Yeah. Right. Correct. Okay. Well, so is that what it is? It's the public hearing. It's the yeah. Didn't we ask we had a separate public public yeah. hearing. No, we've we've done it with the select board and the finance committee in the past. Yes, we have. So does the doesn't the does a public hearing have to be publicized or? And yeah, we it have is publicized. That's what I yeah, it will be t there's if for April seventh. There's plenty of time to put it. Get and a who, does, who does that? I can't remember. I can do well, it. Casey will do it. Okay, thank you, Casey. Trevor, um, if yeah. We're doing a, remember, if we're doing a public hearing, Trevor. Yeah. Uh, as far as your town coming design and improvements, yeah. are you going to be able to come up dollar amount, or are you going to be just putting that off for another year? Yeah, I'll I'll let you know, Jeff. I, I would love to come up with a dollar amount, although you know where do I, I look around, I don't know where we get the money other than borrow, right, to start that project. So um right. yeah, I think I think yeah. it'll be tough love for everybody, but it is what it is. You know, we just we understand it's it's um it's really a I mean it's a, a want and a need, but it's really, you know, on a hard year we may have to wait. So right. Uh, but right. I will so get you solid numbers. Get yeah. Right. Denise is, well, I Denise just is trying say to get through. It, me. It, it, I, I, I've got to go. Okay. Bye, Denise. I, I don't to need to stay, on. do I? No. You no. Don't. Bye, Denise. Thank you, Bye. Denise. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. Yeah, Trevor. I was just going to say, if it's something that we had to vote on, we'd have to do it before the seventh. Yes. At seventh. Right. If we're right. going to put it off for another year, then we then we don't need to address that. Yeah. Uh, true. I'll let you know, but I. I I don't know where we get the money to start it this year unless we just borrow. So it might, it, right. it would have, yeah, I don't know. All right. And just to, just to clean this up. So it make it easy, easier for Stacy. Yeah. Sorry, Tracy. It make it easier. It. Casey, I'll get it. Casey. <laughs> so we have uh, Lacey. other items tabled here. Yeah. Like the climate and wastewater, the hundred, uh, the yeah. million dollars million. and the 384,000. We are pushing yeah. that into the next year, correct? Anything that's been tabled? Well, the only thing is, though, uh, you know, I, I think it's worth, I, I think of like the wastewater treatment resiliency stuff, that million. I think it's worth voting it. it doesn't mean it's going to get funded but if a grant comes along out of out of federal government and we could move on something like that i'd hate to not i mean unless you'll come together with a special meeting i worry that any of the 
you know, they're, they're looking at an infrastructure bill coming out soon. And I don't know what we'll get for money through USDA uh, for projects um, in the coming year. I, just I, I think, not I think have we the ability to act on something. I think we, we would be willing to come to, okay. to have a special Great. meeting. As long, yeah, as long as we know that, hey, we get this opportunity, can we come together mid-year and yes. have something? Yeah, we've done yeah. that before. Okay, great. That's awesome. Man. Thank yeah. you. Okay. okay, so anything else? Uh, someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll, I'll make, make that, that motion. motion. Oh, whoa, about that was it, fast. Everyone. I'll second it then. <laughs> Thank Mark you all so much. Carolyn. Um, all, in, all in favor, Jack Davey, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. Ken Cutterback, aye. Denise isn't here. Skip Sobieski, uh, aye. aye. Jeff Upton? Jeff Upton, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank aye. you, everyone. Excellent. Appreciate it. Good night. Thanks night. again, Alex. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Alex. Everybody. Bye. You're welcome, guys. Jack. Have a good night.